Hey there, horror fans. Are you ready to dive into the neon-soaked, VHS-fueled world of Maxine? The highly anticipated sequel to X and Pearl has finally arrived, and it's got everything you crave. Murder, mystery, and Mia Goth in her absolute best. Let's unravel this wild ride together. Cafe Crashdown. I am Kayla here, the host of Cafe Crashdown, and we are diving deep into Maxine. Directed by T. West and starring Mia Goth, Maxine is set in 1985 and draws inspiration from the very gritty video nasties era. This film not only continues the story from X and Pearl, but also brings a new flavor to the trilogy with its unique blend of horror and the whodunit elements. Trust me, you don't want to miss this one. Let's just talk a little bit more about the overall plot. In Maxine, we follow the sole survivor of the Texas porn star massacre, Maxine Minx, played by Mia Goth. The film kicks off with Maxine thriving in LA's adult film industry thanks to her agent. Just as she lands a coveted role in The Puritan 2, her world begins to unravel when a mysterious stalker starts killing her friends. The stalker is fed information by shady private investigator John Labatt, portrayed by Kevin Bacon, which we absolutely love, and a scene-stealing performance. As Maxine fights to stay ahead of the killer, the film dives into a gritty 80s inspired whodunit that keeps you guessing until the very end. So let's talk about that atmosphere and tone. T. West's vision of 1985 Hollywood is a character in itself. The seedy, neon lit streets, the gritty VHS aesthetic, and the pulsating synth score love it, create an atmosphere that is both nostalgic and unnerving. The film's tone perfectly balances horror and camp, making it a thrilling ride from start to finish. The 80s era is brought to life with meticulous detail, from the costumes to the music, immersing you in a world that is as stylish as it is dangerous. So yeah, Mia Goth, she shines as Maxine, bringing a ferocious energy to the role. Maxine is a survivor, hardened by her past and driven by her desire for stardom. Goss's performance is different from her previous roles in the trilogy to feel fresh and yet familiar. Kevin Bacon's private eye character is a sleazy delight with a ridiculous Louisiana accent that will be mimicked for horror fans for years to come. The supporting cast, including Giancarlo Esposito, Halsey, Elizabeth Zabicki, and Moses Sumney, all add depth and color to the film, each delivering memorable performances. So let's talk about some of the themes and symbolism in this film. It definitely continues to explore the dichotomy between pornography and horror, a theme that has been central to the trilogy. Maxine's journey from adult films to mainstream cinema mirrors the film's exploration of the blurred lines between exploitation and art. The film also touches on themes of survival, of ambition, and the dark side of fame. T. West weaves these themes into the narrative, making Maxine a thought-provoking as well as visually stunning film. So what do I got to say about it? I feel like I've been talking and praising and saying all these great things about it, which, hey, it was. It was, it was great. But I got to get a little critical here, okay? So while Maxine excels in many areas, it does have some flaws. The pacing, especially in the middle act, can feel slow, which might be a turnoff for some viewers. The mystery element, it is intriguing, but it moves a bit too leisurely for the, you know, whodunit aspect. However, this slower pace does allow for deeper character development and lets the audience soak in the atmospheric details. So there are pros and cons to this, but the film's climax is a mix of camp and gore, which may divide some audiences, but it fits with the overall tone of the trilogy. And listen, I'm here for the camp, okay? So give me the camp, give me the gore, like, I'm here for it, okay? It fits with the other films, part of this trilogy, so 
I don't have any issue with it, but there, you know, there might be some people out there who do. And so let's talk about viewer reaction. The reaction of this film has been mixed, but passionate. Fans of the trilogy appreciate the bold stylistic choices and the character driven narrative, while others feel the film's pacing and tone shifts detract from its impact. But personally, I loved the slow burn and found it incredibly effective in building tension. The third act with its blend of camp infused gore and dramatic reveals is sure to be a talking point among horror aficionados. And so overall, I just genuinely really appreciated this film. So going back to the atmosphere, it is a standout feature with its gritty VHS inspired visuals and that pulsating 80s soundtrack. If you guys have watched like any of my previous videos, you know that I'm all about that sim. The film's psychological elements are heightened by Mia Goth's intense performance and the claustrophobic cinematography. The use of red lighting, dark alleys, and nightclubs create this like sense of unease that permeates the entire film. The scene of Maxine performing a strip tease in front of the one-way mirror with the killer tightening his black gloves is a perfect example of how the film blends eroticism and horror to create something uniquely disturbing. While the ending might not have been a mind-blowing twist that some were expecting, I feel like it provides a fitting conclusion to Maxine's journey. The third act is a wild ride filled with campy gore and dramatic confrontations. It's a climax that stays true to the trilogy's roots, blending horror and humor in a way that is both entertaining and unsettling. It, to me, ties up loose ends, leaving a very lasting impression. So overall, Maxine is a thrilling and satisfying conclusion to T.U.S. X Trilogy. It's a film that balances style and substance, delivering a very unique blend of horror, mystery, and dark humor. Mia Goth's performance, ah, it's definitely the highlight and the film's atmosphere details make it a standout in the genre. While it may have some pacing issues for some, I feel like the overall experience is one that horror fans won't want to miss. So. Highly recommend Maxine to the fans of the X Trilogy and anyone who's looking for a really fun, campy, gore horror kind of vibe. So if you're a fan of 80s horror aesthetics and character driven narratives, this film is definitely a must watch. T. West and Mia Goth have created a trilogy that's both ambitious and impactful and Maxine is a fitting end to their cinematic journey. If you've seen Maxine, totally let me know in the comments what did you think? Did you enjoy this like 80s thrill ride or was this just not your bag? Let me know. Did it live up to your expectations? And don't forget to hit that like button uh, if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to my horror and sci-fi channel Cafe Crashdown for more in-depth movie reviews in the horror genre and sci-fi genre. We talk about a lot more than that, but in regards to this stuff, we do a lot of movie reviews. So definitely stay tuned for more horror goodness coming your way. Thanks for joining me on this deep dive into Maxine. Remember the best horror often comes from the most unexpected places. So keep exploring, stay curious, and until next time, maybe keep the lights on.